This is gonna be one of those videos where I'm just talking to you and we're gonna have a conversation about being a digital nomad. So this isn't a travel video, even though I'm still here in Kathmandu for another few days. I've been here almost a month now and we'll be going back to Bali on Sunday and I can't wait to go back. But anyway, the topic of this video is going to be how living as a digital nomad actually saves me a lot of money per year. Obviously, there's the conception that travel is expensive um, and that to live a digital nomad lifestyle, you have to have a lot of money. That's obviously not the case. I mean, people live on different amounts of money as a digital nomad, but I'm gonna talk about my personal story and my expenses and compare how much I spend per year in this digital nomad lifestyle versus how much money I would be spending per year if I was still living in America, which is the country where I was born. So to give a little background, if you are new to this channel, my name is Adrian Fields and I'm a digital nomad entrepreneur living in Bali, living in Thailand right now in Kathmandu where my business is based and I do export from here. And it is my business that I do from Nepal, which gives me the freedom to live anywhere in the world. So I've been living this way for the past three years now. It, almost exactly three years ago, I left Los Angeles. I gave up my apartment, I sold my car, I sold all my furniture, and I moved to Mexico. And I was in Mexico for about a year and a half. And then from there, after I got robbed, I had to go back to America for a little bit, redo some stuff, but then moved to Thailand, Chiang Mai, of course, was there for just about half a year. And I've been in Bali for the last four months. So. I feel, you know, over the past three years, I've gained quite a bit of insight into this lifestyle and obviously I'm able to give an accurate look into how much money I spend per year on average. So I've made a list here in my notebook and I'm gonna be using this to talk to you and give you a breakdown of different living expenses and costs. And by the end of this video, I'm gonna tally it all up and tell you how much money I save living as a digital nomad versus living a regular Western lifestyle. So first things first is rent. When I was living in Los Angeles, the last place that I lived, I was paying about $1,700 per month for a one bedroom apartment in the Beechwood Canyon, Hollywood Hills neighborhood. And I loved that apartment to be completely fair. And that apartment was actually under market value because of a state initiative that was going on for low income people, which I fit the criteria at the time. And so I had this amazing apartment that was completely new with beautiful hardwood floors and central air and a bathtub and in the Hollywood Hills. And that was $1,700. That apartment now is renting for $2,200. And that again, is just a one bedroom apartment. So if I was still living in Los Angeles, I'm calculating for the basis of this video that my rent would probably be $1,800 a month and that would be for a one bedroom apartment somewhere in Los Angeles, nothing special. Now as a digital nomad, I spend on average $600 a month on rent and that obviously fluctuates. When I was living in Tulum in Mexico, I was paying around $500, $550 a month. In Bali, I was paying $500 a month to live in Abud. Now I'm paying as low as $300 to live in, a, in Changu. Uh, and when I was in Chiang Mai, I was paying almost $700 for a totally luxurious building. So on average, it comes out to about $600 a month. So already you can see there, that's a savings of $1,200 a month. That's one of my big ticket line items that I'm saving on. And of course, there's some other costs associated with digital nomadism and being able to you know, live that cheaply, which I'll get into a little bit later. All right, let's talk. Food. So when I lived in America, I definitely cooked more than I do now. One of the things that I love about being a digital nomad is I don't cook, clean, or do laundry. And that means that as a digital nomad, I go out for every meal every day. But when I was living in Los Angeles, uh, that was definitely not the case. I would make my own breakfast. I would usually make my own lunch. Not necessarily make my own lunch, actually, I should say, but buy something that was pre-made, either like something pre-made from Whole Foods or, um, you know, cook a frozen burrito from Trader Joe's or something like this. And then dinner time, I probably made pasta two or three times a week. And then other times I would just get takeaway. Um, so anyway, I calculated that I was spending around $800 a month for food in Los Angeles for groceries and takeaway and things like this. As a digital nomad, I spend on average $600 a month. And I calculated that by the basis 
They usually I eat two meals a day and it's coming out to about $20 a day average to eat out. So let's talk transport. <laughs> this is another big one that is really obviously tilting things in the favor of being a digital nomad. So when I lived in Los Angeles, I had a car, which basically you need to survive there. Um, first I had a Toyota Prius that I was leasing and then I inherited my father's car, which he didn't need anymore. So at that point my expenses were really just insurance and gas. But that was a special situation and if I was having to lease a car, there's an annoying dog in the background barking, but that's cat do for you. If I didn't have um, the benefit of inheriting my father's car and I had to pay for a lease and car insurance and gas, at the minimum I would be spending $500 a month. And that you can calculate based on probably $300 lease, um, a car insurance maybe $150 and then gas, you know, sliding scale. As a digital nomad, I drive a motorbike. In Mexico I bought my own motorbike, um, which I resold when I left and then otherwise I am renting. So in Chenggu, my rental costs for the motorbike are around $50, $60 a month. In Chiang Mai, it was more. But anyway, I'm averaging it as about $80 a month and gas is so negligible, it's like a dollar to every time I fill the tank. So again, you can see much cheaper to be a nomad than a sedentary car driving Westerner. All right, let's talk travel and visas. Obviously this is a big expense as a nomad because I have to purchase visas every so often depending on which country I'm in and then also there are things called visa runs so for example in Thailand I have to bounce out every two three months in uh, Bali it's every two months as well so I calculated on average that I am spending around three thousand dollars on travel and visas per year. This obviously depends on so many different factors, but I think this is just what it is for me. Now, when I lived in the West, I also used to travel, but when I would go abroad, I used to Airbnb my home out, and that would offset the travel costs. So in this case, for the sake of this video, I'm saying that my travel costs would have been zero because they would have been offset by the Airbnb, you know, profit basically from where I lived. All right, so other costs um, are pretty negligible, but let's say, for example, gym. When I was in the West, it was anywhere from $60 to $100 a month. In Asia, I'm spending around $40 a month on average for a gym. Cell phone, okay. So I had a T-Mobile plan when I lived in Los Angeles, and that was, at the time, $100, then it went down to $80. In Asia, I spend no more than like $15 a month for a cell phone plan because I have an unlocked iPhone. And then we can also add in co-working space. I didn't have a co-working space in Los Angeles. I just worked from home. Here in Asia, especially in Bali, I've really found that co-working space adds a lot of value to my life in terms of networking and meeting people. So that's around $60 a month. And then let's talk Wi-Fi and utilities lastly, last category. So in Los Angeles, if I added up my Wi-Fi bill plus my gas plus electric plus whatever else you pay when you own when you are renting, it was about $150 a month. In Bali, for example, when I rent, that's all included. I'm not paying extra for electric, I'm not paying extra for Wi-Fi, any of that stuff. Um, when I lived in Thailand, though, I was paying extra for the electric and the Wi-Fi, but, you know, it was pretty little compared to what it would have been in the West. So at most, it's maybe $20, $30 a month. But in the case of this, because I'm not spending any money on it in Bali, I just put it as a zero. So, a drum roll tally. Uh, when I was living in Los Angeles, on average, my yearly living costs were $40,680 per year. As a digital nomad, I have calculated my annual living expenses come to... Wait, I think I made a little mistake. I think I'm missing a zero in my calculation. I... All right, so my living expenses come to $19,700 a month. I'm gonna have to just do the math and double check, make sure that's right, because there is a zero missing somewhere. It could be 19,070 or it could be 19,700. But either way, 
you get the case that it is half the cost to live as a digital nomad versus a Westerner. And in my case, because I can live anywhere in the world and I'm making money from wherever I am, it makes a lot more sense to live this lifestyle than to pay double the cost in America where I actually don't feel that I'm getting such a high quality of life for the cost of living. And I also just wanted to say, did I make any other notes here? Yeah. I made some notes about the benefits and the drawbacks of being a digital nomad, which I'll just talk to you now off the cuff as I have some coffee. So of course, why do people end up being a digital nomad? So I think that, as I said, cost is obviously one factor that you can live much more cheaply in places like Asia and maybe uh, Eastern Europe and Latin America versus the developed countries in the West. That's a big part of it. And when you're an entrepreneur or self-employed, you know, that having that flexibility and that freedom and, you know, again, that you're not as stressed about cost of living is a really big boost to your quality of life. For me, as I said, I hate to cook. Um, I don't particularly enjoy cleaning either. So the fact that I can live a lifestyle where I don't have to do either of those things is quite a large benefit to me. Um, I love to travel. So being a digital nomad means that I get to visit many new places and have many new experiences that I wouldn't have if I was living in the West and the cost of living was higher and things like this. So just in this past year, for example, um, I went to Myanmar on a visa run that I turned into like a really special journey. Um, going to Bagan, I visited Australia for the first time on a visa run from Bali. So I'm getting to have all of these new experiences and visit new places that I wouldn't get to visit otherwise. Uh, so that's a big one. And um, yeah, it's, it's just really, for me, fascinating and inspiring when I get to meet people from around the world and other nomads from you know, so many different places and different backgrounds. And I really love that. Even in America, I couldn't live in a place where there wasn't an, in, an international community. So that, those are the big benefits um, and draws of being a digital nomad. And I guess I can talk a little bit about some of the downsides as well. As I just hit a milestone birthday this year, which I don't really feel is worth repeating. You can just use your imagination to guess how old I am. I really feel like it would be nice to be settled down and to have a home base. Um, and I really haven't had that since I left Mexico where I was, you know, staying for a longer time. Even Thailand, I guess you could say I kind of had a home base in Chiang Mai because I had a six month lease. But in Bali, I've moved around a bunch of different places and the kind of guest house where I'm staying now is very little. And I, it's hard to feel settled there because I don't really have room to just spread out and put all my stuff. So I miss the sense of you know, when I lived in Los Angeles, I had my own apartment with my own furniture. It was decorated the way that I liked and it, you know, it felt like home. So when I would travel and go back there, it was like, okay, I'm going home. I have a sense of home. And I had my dog there and that's another thing that I miss so much is, is having a dog and just feeling like you have roots. I think that is probably the big reason that a lot of people end up leaving the digital nomad lifestyle is that they just start to feel really transient and that they don't have an anchor, that they don't have anything that is uh, very substantive, I suppose. For me, you know, I go back and forth because I know that if I were to have that particular life of having a home and stuff, I would miss traveling. And when I travel, I miss the sense of having a home. I think that is just probably part and parcel of this lifestyle or any lifestyle. I think that as humans, we crave a variety of experiences and that's sort of just, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side to use yet another platitude and cliche, I suppose. But I'm overall really happy with this particular lifestyle. And I think that, you know, it makes money, it makes a lot of sense for me to continue living this way for a little bit while longer to, you know, save some money. Because I think if you can average, save $20,000 a year, you know, if you live as a digital nomad for three years and hypothetically, if you were able to save $20,000 over three years, that would give you a really nice, you know, lump of money that you could use as a down payment on a house or whatever the case may be. Um, and again, because I'm an entrepreneur and a solo entrepreneur, for me, it is really valuable to have the flexibility um, that comes with having a very low cost of living. So. That's really it for this video. I just wanted to chat with you guys and you know give you an insight because I've been here in Kathmandu for the last month. I've already made one video about Kathmandu, which you can watch. 
and otherwise I haven't been moving about too much here. I've really just been focused on my business, but I'm gonna cut myself off because I think now I'm just rambling and you probably came to see this video to learn about how much it costs to live a digital nomad lifestyle and now you know. So if this video was helpful or if you enjoyed me rambling, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more digital nomad ramblings and travel videos. And I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.